St. John's Wort. Sounds like a vacation destination down in the Bahamas or something like that, or possibly even some guy named John's Harry Wart. But that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about Hypericum perforatum, which is a flowery little plant that basically is showing to help relieve depression, help relieve stress, and actually show some positive improvement in terms of reducing biomarkers of stress in the first place. So I wanted to do this video because I think that everyone deserves an understanding of how stress really happens in the body and how that neurochemistry works when it comes down to depression, when it comes down to stress, and how St. John's wort is showing to be a pretty effective way at at least mitigating some of the biomarkers that cause stress or are being shown from stress. So let's dive in a little bit more about what St. John's wort is, but let's also talk about how neurochemistry works when it comes down to that. So, okay, what is chronic stress? It's like we hear about it all the time, we think we have it, but really what is it? Well, I'm gonna get down to the neurochemistry of that in just a second. But it's important to note that over time, if you do have a lot of chronic stress, that's just compounding and compounding and compounding, it can eventually lead to symptoms of depression. And the reason I say symptoms of depression is because depression is one of these ambiguous sort of diagnoses that really doesn't have a solid answer as to what it is. You know, we just can say someone's depressed, but a lot of times what it comes down to is an interruption of the neurotransmitters that are critical for us feeling our best. You know, those are things like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, even things like acetylcholine, those kind of neurotransmitters are responsible for really keeping us in check and keeping us in balance. And when those are interrupted or thrown off or maybe deficient or even too much, it can cause symptoms of anxiety and depression. So the thing is, chronic stress changes some things within your body that can actually make you feel that way and start causing some issues with those neurotransmitters. So we say it can lead to symptoms of depression, even though it may not be an official link to depression after all. But there is one promising thing, and that promising thing is an herbal supplement called St. John's Wort that is showing that it has a pretty positive effect when it comes to reducing the biomarkers of stress and reducing those overall symptoms of depression. So let's talk a little bit about how brain neurochemistry works when it comes to this. You see, St. John's Wort really has two components to it. It has one component that's called hyperserin and one component called hyperforin. And they each do two different things that are pretty critical. So let's talk about hyperserin. What hyperserin does is it increases the blood flow to the capillaries. Basically what that means is you're increasing blood flow to really small blood vessels, particularly in the brain. The brain has a lot of capillaries, so an increase in blood flow right then and there can increase brain activity. So if you're fatigued all the time, right then and there you can be solving that issue at least somewhat. But the other thing that this hyperserin does is it inhibits enzymes that are called the MAOA enzyme and the MAOB enzyme. And what these enzymes do is they can end up interrupting those neurotransmitters that I talked about. They can interrupt the path of the serotonin, of that norepinephrine, of that acetylcholine. So when we can actually inhibit those enzymes, the MAOA and the MAOBs, we can slow down that process. We can help our neurotransmitters out. We can make it so they're not getting as interrupted. And that's just one component of what St. John's wort can do. The next component of St. John's wort is called hyperforin. And before I go into what hyperforin is, I have to explain the reuptake strategy or the reuptake method within the brain and how that works with neurotransmitters. You see, when you produce neurotransmitters, the brain doesn't always utilize them immediately. It doesn't always get an effect from them. So a lot of times, let's just use serotonin for example, your brain will produce serotonin, so a neurotransmitter, and that neurotransmitter will not get utilized all the way. So your body will reuptake it and sort of recycle it, which means you're not getting the full effect of that neurotransmitter. Well, what this hyperforin is, is it is a reuptake inhibitor. And you may have heard of different kinds of antidepressants that are SSRIs, like serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Well, that's the whole process that works, is you're inhibiting that reuptake. So basically, in very simple terms, what that means is that an uptake inhibitor allows that neurotransmitter to stick around longer and have a more powerful effect before it's eventually reuptake and used again and recycled. Now, the interesting thing is hyperforin or St. John's wort doesn't work in the traditional fashion that say a normal antidepressant would work. It works through a whole different mechanism of action. And I can go into this in another video, but basically what it does is it increases sodium and calcium, which basically means that the gradient between the neuron and the synaptic cleft is a little bit better in terms of uh, being able to let that neurotransmitter survive, if you will. Again, a fancy way of saying providing the perfect environment for a neurotransmitter to stick around and have a more powerful effect on the brain. 
Serotonin can help you feel good. Norepinephrine can help you be motivated and energized. Dopamine can help you feel like you have a reward. Epinephrine in general can just help you feel excited and feel like everything is good in the world. So when those neurotransmitters are sticking around and they're actually able to be utilized and not just getting reuptaken by the brain, you can see how you have a very positive effect. So let's talk about how chronic stress and St. John's wort actually loop back together, how this all comes back full circle. You see, when we're stressed out for an extended period of time, it starts changing some of our brain chemistry, and it can interrupt and affect something that's called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And I know it's a mouthful to say, but it's a fancy scientific way of saying the brain's ability to communicate with the adrenals. And when that is completely thrown off, what happens is it's been shown that our bodies produce more of what are called glucocorticosteroids. Now, glucocorticosteroids are our steroid hormones like cortisol. We all hear about cortisol. That's the link between stress and cortisol. It all has to do with our brain. Our brain is stressed out, the neurochemistry is all out of whack, so its ability to communicate with the adrenals is thrown off, meaning our bodies are producing more of those glucocorticosteroids like cortisol. Now, it's been shown in some additional studies that glucocorticosteroids actually change the dynamic of the brain and can actually emulate symptoms of depression, which means the plasticity of the brain changes. Our brain's dynamic, our brain's overall biome is just different. So we start feeling depressed. That's why people that are under a lot of stress can show symptoms of depression. An interesting study to back up the effect of St. John's wort on chronic stress was done in 2011 where they took stressed out rats and they gave them a supplemental dose of St. John's wort. What they found over time is that the St. John's wort dramatically reduced their glucocorticosteroid levels and their cortisol levels, mainly due to the fact that it changed the plasticity in their brain. It actually allowed them to basically modify their brain so that they were able to feel better, so that neurotransmitters functioned a little bit better. It actually changed what's known as the plasticity of the brain. So pretty compelling evidence when it comes down to that research study. But lastly, I want to talk about inflammation because I'm always talking about it. You all know me as the inflammation guy. I probably drive you crazy with all my stuff on Facebook and all my stuff on YouTube about inflammation. It is now being shown that St. John's wort can actually inhibit the genes that cause inflammation or at least slow them down. So we're talking about the cyclooxygenase enzyme 2, which is a huge one. That cyclooxygenase enzyme 2 is the enzyme that aspirin inhibits. So basically, you're taking an aspirin to reduce inflammation by reducing that cyclooxygenase enzyme too. That shows you how important that one is. So if we can reduce that through St. John's wort, that's pretty remarkable. Then we're also talking about reducing interleukin-6, which is one of the biggest triggers for inflammation in general. When interleukin-6 is released, our body goes into this crazy inflammatory response. Interleukin-6 is triggered when we have a disease state or when we have a serious injury. And lastly, you can reduce something that's known as the nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Now, that nitric oxide synthase is more of a localized inflammation situation. So if you have chronic pain in one area, a lot of times it could be the result of that. So if St. John's Ward is showing some positive signs in the world of inflammation, we could be seeing a lot more of it in the future, which I personally just find extremely fascinating. So I guess at the end of the day, the purpose of this video was to explain that entire link between neurochemistry, between our brain, between chronic stress, so you really have a keen understanding of it. Because you know, what really ends up happening is if you're stressed out all the time, then you're screwing up your neurochemistry. And when you start screwing up your neurochemistry, then you're actually screwing up the ability for your brain to communicate with your adrenals. And when you start going down that road, then you're messing up your hormone levels. And when you start messing up your hormone levels and increasing your cortisol levels, well then you're not able to absorb your nutrients as much because your body really starts thinking that it's in that fight or flight mode all the time which means your metabolism slows down, which means your liver starts prioritizing other things. It's this cascading effect that can make you feel horrible. And I have people coming to me all the time that are just saying they feel like they're depressed. They don't always say they're depressed, they just say they feel like they're depressed. But then when you actually start diagnosing what's going on in terms of their life, they're stressed out, they're chronically stressed out, and they're not giving themselves a break. So they're actually starting to affect themselves, metabolically speaking. So even if St. John's wort isn't the trick for you specifically, I encourage you to start getting a grasp on your stress because it can directly have an effect with your overall body. And as always, post a comment down below this video and let me know what kind of videos you want to see specifically pertaining to stress. I'm fascinated with stress and I'd love to do more content surrounding it to be able to help the most possible amount of people that I can. And as always, keep up locked in here in my videos for more ways to get educated not only on nutrition, but how to live the best life possible. See you soon.